Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about UPS. Is this going to be part of a four or five part series of videos where I'm going to test each of the main NAS brands in 2020, so these are the ones that cover both home and business use, and I'm going to connect them to a UPS. In this case this is a CyberPower UPS and this one they've sent to us, very nice of you to do that, thank you for responding to my emails, I'm sorry I begged. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is connecting each one of the popular NAS brands out there, so Synology, QNAP, Asus Store, TerraMaster, Netgear 2, hopefully, if I can get that unit back sample, uh, the sample I've got on loan, and then I'm going to show you guys what exactly happens in the event of a power failure if your NAS is connected to a UPS. There's going to be a separate video for each brand. This is going to be the first one. It's got the Synology involved inside it. Uh, this is an empty box right now. This is the 1019 Plus, and that's because that is over there. You can probably hear it humming in the background right now, and we're going to connect that NAS and do a bunch of file operations with it, and simultaneously while that's happening, we're then going to pull the power cord um, from the wall, which is basically going to kill any live mains power to the Synology NAS. The NAS will only then be running from that device. And I want to show you guys exactly what happens in the event of that failure. So what we're going to do is make our way over to the laptop. And while that's going on, I'm also going to position a tripod camera aimed at this and the NAS to show you when the disconnection has taken place. There might be a doubling up of sound at one point. I do apologize. And I, hopefully that won't happen. But otherwise, let's make our way to the screen. Okay, I've installed the brand new CyberPower UPS, it's on the other side of the room, and it's connected to the recently rebooted DS1019 Plus. So, before I go ahead with the disconnection, as you can see on screen there, hopefully uh, everything's on screen, there should be the NAS, the UPS, and the power outlet, or at least there was the last time I went to the tripod. If we make our way to the control panel, we can look at some of the options with regards to the UPS. If we go to hardware and power, we can make our way to this tab over here and from here it's saying that UPS has been connected you can enable UPS support so what you need to do is click UPS support and then you can enable some of the different options for when things go wrong now on the screen I'm just gonna look over you can probably notice a purple cable there that is a USB cable a USB a to a USB B cable this kind of acts as the heartbeat between these two devices, and it's how the Synology knows that the UPS has discovered a lack of mains power. So having that USB cable is kind of paramount. You don't need to do it that way. There are other ways to do it. This cyber power UPS, much like a lot of UPSs, does have its own network connectivity, even a, um, a rudimentary user interface, a graphical user interface you can access over the network. But if you're going to connect a UPS to a NAS, I strongly recommend using that USB port. Now, here is where you can decide what you want the UPS, uh, the NAS to do in the event of a power problem. So as you can see, we've enabled it, and then we can enable it so, for example, the NAS will enter safe mode after a period of time. Safe mode being kind of a hibernation standby mode. And you can enable it so that even when a UP, uh, the UPS triggers the NAS, uh, an alert that says, oh my God, there's a problem, you can have it so that the NAS will do nothing for a certain period of time if you do have lots of operations taking place. So we're not going to alter, alter that safe mode one there. We're going to leave that um, unchecked. Then we're going to go with the option to shut um, the UPS to... Um, Shut down, you can shut down the UPS to conserve battery power once the NAS has entered its own safe mode. So, we're going to have no delay. We're just going to have the whole system shut itself down for safety's sake once we disconnect the power. And then, of course, if you're utilizing UPS servers, this allows you to have multiple devices shut themselves down once connected. If we go to device information, we can find out more about the UPS we're using. As you can see, it's that class 1500 cyber power, and it's mentioning just how much time there is based on the current um, draw from the device, and we've only got the NAS connected right now. So before I go any further, it's also worth highlighting that all the alerts we're going to see today are on this screen. If you enable um, network and uh, remote access via the internet, utilizing uh, many of the mobile applications and using the disk station application, um, the Synology Assistant tool, 
for mobile devices, then what you can do is get a push notification to your mobile devices, be it over the internet or the network. Those are things that you can sort out, but today we're focusing predominantly on localized stuff and what's gonna happen with the NAS when I pull that mains power. So I think that's about it. Let's close that there. I'm gonna let that update all the settings that we've done so far. And once again, that UPS will also shut down alongside the NAS as well, so I get ready to hear quite a lot of beeping. But once this has saved the updated information that we've done there, which is done, I'm gonna make my way to the other side of the room and pull that mains power cable. So sit tight there, I'm just gonna move over. You'll probably see my leg or something on camera. Let's simulate a mains power failure. So immediately, the fans kicked in on the UPS. Clearly, this device is now doing the job that it's supposed to do. On screen here, we can see that the UPS right now is triggered and it's sending notifications to the Synology NAS. Um, right now, the Synology NAS, I can see physically, those LEDs are starting to trigger. And which can only mean, there we go, that there we go, we've got our information that is being sent through from the UPS. If we have a look here, UPS connection has entered battery mode. So the UPS is now running on its own internal battery system and our NAS is still operational. So let's make our way into the device. Let's have a quick look. Let's do some copies and pastes perhaps. There's all our photos from, um, let's make a copy of that and stick that in a new directory, shall we? Chuck that in there. The beep now is now going ballistic, let us know. And it's telling us now that our NAS is now running on UPS power alone. We're still using the NAS, we're not using mains power, and we've not set it up that the device is gonna go into standby. If we want to do that, we can go ahead with it now and make our way into the device. We're gonna keep hearing that beep from time to time, and it is gonna continue to alert us, but I think now we can start making our way into um, testing a new scenario with this UPS. I'm gonna let this file finish doing its job, and as you can see on screen, I've not changed anything there with regards to the NAS itself. This device, the UPS, is still powering our Synology NAS. So, next, we're going to see what the triggering of an auto shutdown looks like. So we're gonna reconnect the UPS, two seconds. And hopefully, hopefully you heard that on the microphone. The fans have kicked down. We're going to allow this to do its thing. We're still going to leave that there to see what happens on our screen. And it says it's now returned to traditional power mode or AC mode. That alert there will probably change in a moment. Um, but for now, we can see that things have returned to normal. So let's refresh this page. Because I think that alert is just going to be annoying there on screen. And then what we're gonna do now is alter the UPS settings, this time to do an automatic sh um, shutdown to hibernation. So again, we'll go back into hardware and power. See, good has returned there on screen. We'll go to the UPS section. And this time, we're going to get the device to shut down completely into safe mode. We're gonna give it 15 seconds. We're gonna click apply. And this time, the NAS will enter safe mode 15 seconds after it's noticed the power, the mains power connection to the UPS has failed. So I'm going to let that finish what it's doing and then I'll make my way to the other side of the room and once again simulate that mains power failure. So let's go head over. Once again, the beeping and the fans have all kicked in once again and again. Your disk station is now running on battery mode. So let's do some operations real quick. See how much time we've got. 
copy that, stick that in a new directory. Let's have a look, and it looks like, yes, the standby mode is now in effect. So the device is now ceasing us to be able to do any of our read-write operations. And now our device is going to slowly enter its brand new standby mode while the device stops us being able to muck around with the files and potentially damage um, any read-write actions going forward. The lights are no longer flashing. Oh, they're doing a little bit of flashing there on the Synology NAS. The UPS is beeping like crazy. And now device is in that mode operation failed and now we're not going to be able to go back into the device fully until we have re-established that power connection and as you can see now the Synology NAS has just shut down as has the UPS what we're looking at here is a hollow hollow DSM that doesn't connect to anything so for now as you can see power has not been re-established and therefore the UPS and the Synology have safely shut themselves down. So let's re-establish that power and bring things back just to make sure everything's fine. Two seconds. There we go. Let's have a look. The UPS is back up and running. And as we can see, the UPS is now back up and running. And it's alerted that the battery at the back has now reached full connection and it's on AC connectivity. Um, I would have liked it if the Synology had rebooted itself on the re-establishment of power, but you can't have everything. And I can imagine there's lots of counter-arguments why you wouldn't have that kind of functionality. I'm just going to pop the Synology back on. And that will take an extra minute or two to boot. But for now, I'd say that that UPS is doing its job. It's worth highlighting once again that in the event that you establish remote access via the, um, the Quick Connect system that Synology provide for internet and network access anywhere in the world, you would get the notifications and all the push notifications related to a UPS warning. But this has been a Synology NAS and UPS test. Right now, the device here is now going to be powered down because we're going to be using this same UPS to test out a number of other NAS brands to see how they all compare. Today, we've utilized a CyberPower uh, UPS, and although I have used a bunch of UPSs in the past, this one kind of, it's one of the best value for money out there. And I know a number of you might not like that term in terms of batteries, but I've got to say, a fraction of the cost, realistically, than an APC, it's not disappointing me. You may notice there on camera, there is a second plug point. That connects to my APC there on the left. And to be perfectly frank, I can't see much of a difference. But then maybe time will tell. But we'll see moving forward. And as we can see, we're re-establishing a link to that Synology NAS. We can go into there. And there's our NAS back up and running. And it's barely been minutes. I've not even skipped forward. This has all been in real time for you guys. And if we go back to the notification center, we can see that all connections have been re-established. What more could you want? If you've enjoyed this video, click like. If you want to learn more about UPSs and see the rest of this series, click subscribe. And I'll see you next time.